Thanks for joining us today on Apostolic Pentecostal Channel. We are here to provide new and classic sermons weekly. We have tried to remaster and restore these sermons. Thanks for joining us. Please like, comment, and subscribe. May Yahweh's blessings be with you. I'm the one that's blessed today for being among you. For every time I get the opportunity and the privilege to come, it, it, it's inspiring to me. It does something to me that, that uh, being in any other place does not do. Because I see and feel here uh, such a great presence of God. And then the purpose, a purpose. It's not just, you know, we're not just here to be here. But there's a purpose behind it all. And God is behind that purpose. And he's directing and leading and, and guiding you as well as your leaders here. Good to see Brother Enzi. And I really appreciate him and his work here at the Bible College. Brother Enzi is a great man. A great man. I, I say that today and from my heart. To me, he has always been a, a leader among us. And what he is doing here, to me, establishes even greater the greatness of his service to the kingdom of God. So I appreciate him, and I know you do too. Because God is definitely using him in a great way. And then Brother Hunt today, to be with him and be with the senior class, I want to thank him for that privilege. And then getting an opportunity today to minister the word of God for a few minutes here. And I do pray that God's word, not myself, for why I can do nothing, but what his word can do for us today and the principles and the way to get things done in the kingdom of God. It's not everyone that saith, Lord, Lord, that's going to enter into the kingdom of God. But it's he that doeth the will, doeth, doeth, doeth. And when we look in that area of doing what God wants us to do, it really means a lot. And I want to say thank you to this college. I made the statement this morning in our uh, meeting with the seniors. We have 34 home missionaries in our district right now. Seven of those missionaries are graduates of TBC. Presently, that are missionaries, seven are graduates of TBC. And uh, they're doing a great job. They're getting the job done. I talked to the senior class last year. And Brother Hector uh, Carazales, I, I say it like that, may be different, but uh, he's in McAllen. And uh, Brother Hector is doing a good job. He went from the senior class, and he's running about 30 or 40 now in uh, McAllen. I just got a letter from him. He said, I baptized several, and I got some more to be baptized. And he was all excited. He said, I'm teaching one on Monday night. I believe four Bible studies on, on uh, Tuesday night. And on Friday, he's got eight people in a Bible study class. So he said, I know we're going to grow. And I know he's going to grow because he's planting the seed of the Word of God. Amen. So I really, I'm really thankful for that and uh, what the Lord is doing. And I look forward to having some more of uh, TBC graduates involved in home missions and being a part of home missions. So we thank you for the privilege of being here. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Began reading with verse 1 from the Corinthian letter of the Apostle Paul. I'll, I'm going to perhaps just hit some high points today. And we'll just go from here. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1. Would to God ye would bear with me in my folly. And indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband. That I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest by any means. As the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility. So your mind should be corrupted. From the simplicity that is in Christ. And notice those words. The simplicity that is in Christ. And if I were to title this today. I want to read one more scripture first. Matthew chapter 19. And uh, verse number 26. Matthew 19. 
Paul in Corinthians talked about the simplicity that is in Christ. Matthew 19, verse 26, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. With God all things are possible. I want to preach a little while today on the simple and the complex. Or we could say it like this, the possible and the impossible. The possible and the impossible. You may be seated. There are divine principles in the Word of God that when, inher- when, when we obey them, they bring divine results. They are overlooked by the wise and the prudent of this world. I'm going to say today that in this world's wisdom, we will not find what we need To accomplish the task that God has called us to do. It's not in this world's wisdom. In the book of Corinthians Paul dealt a lot with the wisdom of this world. And he said it like this. When he talked about the wisdom. He said for after that in the wisdom of God. The world knew by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching. To save them that believe. Verse 25 of 1 Corinthians 1 says, Because the foolishness of God, if there is any such thing as the foolishness of God, is wiser than men. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. I believe he was making a contrast here. There is no foolishness in God. But if if there was a degree of knowledge in God, God's less degree of knowledge is wiser than all of the men in the world. And all of the world's wisdom. So I say today that we are trusting. Not in man's wisdom. But in God's wisdom. Human wisdom cannot know the things of the spirit of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. The Bible begins to speak. Verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. Because they are spiritually discerned. You see, what we need today is not the complexity of human wisdom, but we need to get down to the simplicity of the wisdom of Almighty God and what God can do and what God can do through us. When God uses someone, it is not based on abilities alone. God does not have us fill out an application, state all of our qualifications 25 years old, 20 years old, 15 years experience. Oh no, God is looking for somebody that will say to him, here's all I have to offer to you, God. But if you can use it, and my friend, God can use it. But it's your availability in the kingdom of God that will really make the difference. It's not based on ability alone, but God chooses and empowers men to do his work. Involved in the area of home missions, in the work of God, whatever area of the work of God that we are involved in. We realize that God, it's God who chooses men. It's God, after He chooses men, it is God that empowers men to do what He asks them to do. You see in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, notice in verse 26. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh... Not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen. Oh, my friend, you know who's in control of this thing? It's the God that we serve. It's the Jesus that we sang about today. He's in control. He's choosing. God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen. Yea, and things are which, which are not to bring to naught things that are. That no flesh should glory in his presence. There's the real reason for it, you see. What went on in Laredo? Oh, it was God using men. It was God using this evangelistic team that went out. 
But you know who gets the glory for it? You gave it to him today. It's the God of glory that empowered you, that brought you. It's God who saved that woman that they were talking about. Oh, my friend, I can't limit God today. I can't draw a circle around certain situations and say, God, you can't work it out. We're serving a God that he can do anything, but he chooses to do it through you and through me that are sitting here today. Glory. How much potential do we have? Well, how big do we want God to be? What our concept of God, what can he do through us? And I want to say today that, that there is a horizon of opportunities awaiting us in the kingdom of God. That we must realize that God wants to use us to do it. John 15 and 5, Jesus said, without me, ye can do nothing. Hallelujah. God uses people. God does not expect us to do his part. Here's why I really want to get down to the meat of my message today. God doesn't expect us to do his part. He's God. There are things that God can do that I'll never do. Might think I can sometimes. <laughs> And that's when the trouble starts. But God, a God, the Bible said nothing is impossible with him. We provide the human vessel through which he has chosen to work. There is a principle I wish to preach about. When man does what God requires of him, and I'm going to call it the simple things, the simple things. I'm not saying today that that he just, he doesn't think too much of us. God thinks everything of us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He loves you and I. We are high in his sight. We are the apple of his eye. But he loves us enough never to ask us to do anything that we can't accomplish. When we do the simple things, there is a God who will take care of the complex. And when we do the possible and the possible is what you and I can do as individuals. There's a God who will take care of the impossible. The simple and the complex are the possible and the impossible. Confusion, confusion rings in our world today because man has left God out. Romans chapter 1 tells us, it gives us a complete story. Man worships himself. More than he does God. The creature becomes God. Instead of the creator. But when we do the simple things. And there are some things in the church. That we must never forget. Things that are simple. That when we do them. There is a God. Who will take care. Of the impossible. There is a story that I want to refer to. In the Old Testament. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Jehoshaphat was faced with a battle. In that battle, there was an enemy that came against him that was greater than he was. Jehoshaphat did something very simple. He could have tried to uh, get tactics and arrange his army and do a lot of things, but I'm going to tell you what this king did. He did the simple act of prayer. He came before God in simple prayer. When we face things that we cannot overcome in our own lives, listen, the greatest weapon that we have got is the weapon of prayer. It is prayer that's going to move God. It's prayer that's going to change circumstances. It's prayer that's going to bring answers that nothing else can bring. He got out on his knees and a king began to pray. And it was not long. Until God began to answer that prayer. Listen, if you haven't got your answer to prayer yet, don't stop praying. Keep asking God. There is a God who will never let us down if we go to him in prayer. This answer came in the form of a man who stood up in that congregation of people and began to prophesy. And in the prophecy that was given... A battle needed to be fought. A victory needed to be won. The enemy was greater than those 
that were on God's side. But listen to what the prophecy said in 2 Chronicles 20 and verse 15. And he said, Hearken ye, all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed, by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Let me tell you something today. If you're trying to fight your own battles, you're on the losing side. But if you put them in the hands of the Almighty God, there is a God who is saying that same thing to this group today. He's saying the battle is not yours, but it's God's. And whatever circumstance of life we're in, if we just realize, God, here it is. I want to give it to you in prayer. There's a God who's going to give an answer that's going to be the right answer. And it's going to get you out of that situation. Hallelujah. He said, Tomorrow, go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz. Ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Oh, how many times have we tried to handle things in our own way? How many times have we tried to do things the way we thought it ought to be done? And the more we did something about it, the, 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 the worse it became. But when we can realize, God said, you're not going to need to fight in this battle. Say, I know there's a devil out there. I know he's a powerful devil. I don't worry so much about how he's organized. I've had folks call me, one missionary call me, and he said, I don't know whether I'll ever build a church here. He said, there's a, there's a, a local devil here. Somebody had got a hold of him and give him all kind of uh, prescriptions about the devil and said, there's a local devil here. And because this place is the head of the assemblies of God, I believe there's a district devil here. Oh, let me tell you something. I'm going to just preach it like I was down by the river somewhere out in the country. I don't care if there's a district superintendent devil, if there's a general superintendent devil, if he's got them so organized in battalions. I'm not worried about that today. But I'll tell you where I know the answer is. It's a God. And his name is Jesus Christ. And one little mention of that name can make devils tremble. <laughs> you see, we can get to worrying so much about who's against us that we forget who's for us. We can let our problems get so big that we think, well, I don't know. I don't believe I can see any way out of this. Oh, my friend, if you're on the bottom looking up, just keep looking up. That little ray of light that's coming to you is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he has power over any enemy. get in trouble sometime with the traditions of men with the philosophies of this world listen I didn't have the opportunity to go to Bible college but let me tell you something stay in this book right here stay in this book right here if they tell you I don't care what they tell you if it doesn't agree with what this book says right here you stay right here with this book because this is God's word to you God's word said you won't have to fight in this battle. That's what they said. Simple prayer brought that answer. Listen, when we do the simple, God will take care of the rest. Prayer. After prayer, said you'll not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. I'm going to move quickly to this, but when they got ready to fight that battle, nobody told them to do this. But I'm going to tell you, simple prayer will bring an answer. Simple faith will cause you to act on what God has said. And that simple faith will bring mighty results. Nobody told Jehoshaphat to do this. But because God said, you're not going to need to fight in this battle. When Jehoshaphat organized that army, he didn't get those with sword and spear to go first. He didn't get the biggest ones to go first. But he got those that knew how to worship. He got those that could worship. Now I'm going to tell you. He was acting in faith. Simple faith. When God says he's going to do something. Uh, 
Don't try to fight your way out of it on your own. But get a hold of what this word said, what God said, and act on it in faith. And there's a God who will never let you down. He got those that knew how to worship. Listen, simple, heartfelt worship will always get the job done. I'm not talking about worshiping people or worshiping personalities. But I like what I felt here today. Worshiping Jesus. Singing songs about Jesus. Not, not, uh, not being carried away with different things in this world, but heartfelt worship to Jesus. When that, when that uh, enemy saw that army coming, I'm sure, my friend, that, that if they would have saw the army, they didn't even get a chance to see the army. But if they would have saw them coming, they would have said, oh, uh, we're, we've got this one easy. There's no problem here. But they didn't even get a chance to see the army. Because when they started marching and singing and worshiping God in the beauty of holiness, uh, it was not long until God confused the enemy. And they began to attack one another. They, they thought they were being ambushed. I'm going to tell you, God will always make a way. Jehoshaphat didn't do anything hard. All he did was pray. And the people just worshiped. And God gave them what they needed. There's a God that's going to give us everything we need. But it's when we do the simple. We do the simple. God's church is at a crossroads. We are being invaded with human thinking that will remove us from the simplicity that is in Christ. I want you to hear what I'm telling you. We can be invaded if we open up our minds to every little old thing that's going on out in that world. And you can read things written by so-called religious writers. And I'm not against reading books, but listen, you can get involved in some of these so-called charismatic type writings and the name it and claim it. Somebody said it's a blab it and grab it crowd. And you can get yourself out on a limb that, listen, God's not in that. But when you take this word of God and you obey it uh, and you do what's simple. Oh, some folks say that's too simple. You mean just a prayer meeting? You mean just a worshiping God? Uh, You mean just obeying what God says? Oh, listen, it got the job done then uh, and it'll get the job done now. In anything that we need done in the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say let's return to simplicity. The simplicity of Bible salvation. Old-fashioned repentance. Water baptism in Jesus' name. Receiving the Holy Ghost. Evidence by speaking in other tongues. Oh, that's what gets results. Naaman, what are you going to do? Naaman came to a crossroads. He, he, it didn't work out like he thought it would work out. When he went to get his healing, he went... He thought the prophet ought to come out and just have a big fanfare and everything ought to just be a big production. But when he got there, here came the little servant out and gave him some simple results. Go dip in Jordan seven times. You know what he did? He got mad. No. The simple. God takes care of the rest. Healing? Well, I often tell congregations, God's made it so simple to get healing. Any sick among you? James chapter 5. Let him call for the elders of the church. When you call for healing, don't expect a diagnosis. It might scare you to death if you knew what was wrong with you. Don't expect a diagnosis. Just obey the simple word of God. Let them anoint with all. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. The Lord shall raise them up. Simple. Giving. A lot of people want the gates of 
the uh, windows of heaven open. But I'm going to tell you, God's given us a simple way. Malachi 3, bring all the tithe into the storehouse. That's what opens up the windows of heaven. Simple, simple. Rapture, one of these days we're getting out of here. I want to go in the rapture. But you know how we're going to make it? By simply walking with God every day. I won't. I don't have to worry. Down in my part of the country, a few years back, there was a church. I say church with all the evidence against it. They were doing what they call rapture drills. Don't ask me what they did. I didn't want to get within 100 miles of the place. Maybe they jumped up and down. I don't know. But I know one thing. A human ain't, is going to get just about this. Maybe if he can jump real high, about that high off the ground, that's far as he's going to get, and he's coming back down. But Enoch was no more. But I'm going to tell you how it happened. Enoch just simply walked with God. Let me tell this, this Bible school something. If you want to make it in the rapture, don't worry about getting your name in the headlines somewhere. Just worry about living for God every day. Praying, seeking God, letting the Holy Ghost touch your heart. Day after day after day after day. I say if we do the simple things, God takes care of the rest. Praise God. Hallelujah. Evangelism. Oh, I'm involved in it. I work with men who are involved in it. But the more I see, the more I realize that we have so little to do with it. And God has so much to do with it. If we just sow the seed. I'm a country boy. I know how it is. You plant the seed. But listen, once that seed is planted in the ground, you can do a lot of things. All the worrying you want to do. You can worry about the weather. My dad used to stand at the end of the cotton row and... And if you're not farm background, you won't understand. But he used to take his pocket knife and dig down in the dirt and see if that seed had sprouted. He was so worried about it. If it got cold, he really got worried because it might not grow. But listen, all of the worrying, everything that he could do when that seed was planted, his responsibility was to prepare the soil and to plant the seed. But after it left his hand. Listen. There is a God. Who had it all set in motion. And it wasn't long until you looked down that row. And there was cotton coming up. But God had everything to do with it. Because God set it in motion. Oh. I've seen it with our missionaries. I told that senior class. One man wanted to rent a building. His brother Milligan. Who is a graduate of this college. But let me tell the rest of you. He wanted to rent a building. He, he was starting to have services in his city now. And uh, he had only $200 a month that he could use for that building. What did he do? Did he call headquarters? Did he call me? No. He got out on his knees and he asked God, God, you've got a place for us. God directed him to a man and the man said, I'm sorry. I can't uh, help you, but my son might be able to help you. And he went to the man's son and he said, I've got one building left that I haven't rented to anybody. 30 or 40 people have asked me about it. And Brother Milligan, he listened and he said, an old man owns it. I'm just subleasing it for him. But I want to warn you, this old man and Brother Milligan said it like this. He's a crusty old man. He's hard to get along with. But if you'll go see him, he may rent it to you. Brother Milligan, that night before he went, what could he do? Psychology won't work, my friend, but a prayer meeting will work. He got down on his knees and he began to pray. And the next day, he walks into the house. They get the old man and he comes out of his bedroom. And Brother Milligan wrote to me and said he was just like he said. He was hard to get along with. What do you want, he says. And Brother Milligan began to tell him, I'd like to have this building and it wasn't long until the old man said, all right, I'll rent it to you for $130 a month. But that's not the end of the story. The old man said, let's pray. They joined hands together 
And they began to pray. And Brother Milligan got through praying. And then the old man kept praying. And here's what he said. He said, God, I want to thank you for sending this preacher by today. Because I prayed just last night that you would send somebody by. Listen, who, who made all that happen? It wasn't Brother Milligan. It was the God of heaven. Uh, when a man does what's simple, God will take care of the rest. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. It's natural. It's natural. We fear the future. We don't know what the future holds. Some of you will be stepping out into ministry this year and you'll be going out into the work of God and you're wondering, God, am I going to be able to do it? Listen, you don't have to do anything extraordinary. Let me just preach it to you like I feel it today. The same prayer that brought you to where you are right now is going to open the door for you tomorrow. And the same God is going to do the miracle that you need if you'll just let Him have His way in your life. Yes. Glory. That's why, my friend, Paul could say, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. That's where our answer is. <laughs> I don't have to have my name if there's any such book. As who's who in Pentecost. Oh, we don't need a book like that. All we need is the book that says there's only one who in Pentecost. And that's Jesus Christ. And we're privileged to serve Him every day. <laughs> do what's simple. Be faithful to Him. Be faithful. Can't you do that? Have you been doing that? That's what brought you to where you are right now. And if you haven't been doing it, get a hold of it. Be faithful to God. Simple faithfulness to God is the only prerequisite to a servant of God. 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 4. A man be found faithful. Glory. So it's God. He that goeth forth weeping. Here's our part. Bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again rejoicing. Bringing his sheaves with him. Our job, weep over the lost. Be the intercessor. Plant the seed and God will do the rest. That's why that lady saved. God did the rest. Don't, and I'm going to tell you something. Don't draw a circle around some folks and say they can't be saved. Don't you ever do it. And if you go out and pastor a church somewhere, don't you say, well, I want to win this certain class of people, but I'm going to leave those out. Shame on you if you do that. Whosoever will, let him come. And if you'll just simply preach this word, Ezekiel stood over a valley of dry bones. And did he do anything complex? No. He didn't even know what to answer the Lord. The Lord said, can these bones live? And instead of saying, I don't know, he said, you know. You know what he meant by that? I don't know. <laughs> That's country boy philosophy. <laughs> He's saying, I don't know. He said, God, you know. And God said, well, preach to him. And then you know what God did? God gave him what to preach. And when he opened his mouth and preached what God gave him to preach, guess what happened? In that vision, bones came together. There was a shaking in that valley. But I'm going to tell you how it happened. One man just did what was simple. He didn't try to do God's part. He just did what he was asked to do. So if I'm preaching anything today, I'm saying you can do it. You know what God's looking for today? He's looking for a Moses that will lift up the rod. But when Moses lifted up that rod, what happened? Red Sea parted. Now if Moses, if Moses would have knew everything he needed to know about that, 
I don't know whether he lifted up the rod, but all God told him was to do was lift up the rod. He needs somebody that will just speak to the rock. And water will come forth. He needs a Samson today. I'm looking at some just like that today. That will be willing just to pick up the jawbone of a donkey. But when God gets a hold of you. You can win mighty battles for him. He needs a Gideon today. That will start out with 32,000 men. And when God got through trimming down that army. He had 300 men left. And you talk about mightily armed. Oh, they had the most sophisticated weapons of that day. A pitcher and a light inside of the pitcher. But listen, and a trumpet. But when, when God gave the order, they broke the pitchers and the light shined. And my friend, they won a battle against an army of thousands, tens of thousands. But they just did what was simple. Praise God. Give me a David today that'll take just a little old slingshot. Not a bazooka. Yeah, you'd have been real brave if you'd had a tank with you that day. You'd have gladly gave up Saul's armor. <laughs> but he took a little old slingshot. Something that he knew would work. And he slew a giant with it. Praise God. Give me a Joshua today. That will just linger a little longer. In the presence of God. In the tabernacle. And you will see somebody that will take the place of a great leader. Who stepped aside. Give me a little boy today who will just simply give his lunch. The low lunch. And they mock what is this among so many. But give me just one little one little insignificant young man that'll say, Here's my lunch. And the Lord use it to feed five thousand. And while somebody comes to the instruments in closing, give me somebody that will just practice simple commitment. Simple commitment. Isaiah in the year that King Uzziah died, was in a very significant place. He said, I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord. When he saw God, he's like every one of us that come into the presence of God. He said, woe is me, for I'm, an un for I'm undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. So how do you feel when you get in His presence? High and lifted up? No. Sufficient in yourself? No. Oh. Able to do anything? No. But when you see Him and you get in His presence... You realize your smallness, but you realize his great love for you. I'm preaching tonight, today, that what simple commitment will do. When God saw this man, he sent an angel with a coal of fire from the altar. And he touched his lips. He laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this had touched thy lips. And thine iniquity is taken away. And thy sins purged. Oh to stay a little bit longer in the presence of God. To have him touch me. Not to be in such a hurry. Oh can't we get in a hurry. Can't we get in a hurry even doing the work of God. We can get in such a hurry. That sometimes we think we don't have a little time. To linger in his presence. And to let him touch us. But then when God touched him. He said, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who shall go for us? Then said I, Here am I. Send me. Touched by God, he committed himself to be sent by God. You're not going to be here forever. Three years, 
My year, four years ago, I was pastoring a church and had no idea I'd be where I am right now. About this time of year, just building a new fellowship hall. Happy, happy, happy as I could be. Still happy today. But you see, you never know where you're going to be and time flies. Four years now, I've been involved in this work. Oh, ministry, it's not me, it's not, it's not us, brother. But it's God working through us to get the job done. That's what ministry is. And I'm involved now. Oh, I feel so small about it. I can't do anything. What I know about home missions, churches, and what I know about planting churches. But oh, I got a call from a God. I had to wrestle with that. But I got a call from a God that said, I want you right where you are right now. I want you there. And I had to commit myself. Listen, I had to leave that wonderful church that I pastored that I loved. But then I had to go on and I had to work for one that I love more than any church. Because you see, he's the God that calls us. I'm preaching to some fine young people today. I admire you so much. But what simple commitment will do? What's your future going to be? What you're going to be doing tomorrow? I don't know. But God knows. But the key to getting what God knows and what you need to do together is just simply committing yourself to Him. When Isaiah said, Here am I, send me. God then began to give him instruction what he needed to do. I pray today that I preach to somebody while you stand. I pray that I preach to somebody today that Life to you is more than just something that you're going to just take one day at a time. And so what about tomorrow? But oh, I, I believe I preached to somebody today that the reason you're here now is because you're concerned about tomorrow. And you want tomorrow to be lived for God. But remember what I preached to you today. It's the simple things that you do every day that's going to make the difference. Don't minimize prayer. Don't minimize faithfulness. Don't minimize right living. Don't minimize holiness. Don't minimize what you've been taught all of these years and it's brought you to where you are right now. But get a hold of it because it's the things you're doing right now that'll work for you tomorrow. Whatever God calls you to do, oh, I wish today out of this congregation. Brother Enzi, I wish today out of this congregation God would call several of these young men to be home missionaries. And I believe He is, Brother Enzi. He's calling some foreign missionaries. He's calling some pastors. He's calling some evangelists. But oh, whatever it is, I want you to remember one thing. It's what God can do through you that's really going to make the difference. And if you'll just do the simple things, God will take care of the complex. Lord, I thank you today for this privilege, for these young men, these young ladies. I pray today, God, oh God, that we will never forget where our source of strength and power is, that we will not be spoiled by vain deceits and philosophies of men, but that somehow we can keep the simplicity of it all and that we can see that whatever's done in the kingdom is going to be done through you working through us. Use these young people. Reach out. I pray today in Jesus' name. I want to
that as a commitment. He wants me to live. I want to give until there's just no more to give. I want to After a message like this, there's so many things that go through my mind, words that I would want to say. But I believe that the Lord was speaking to me. And I want to ask you just, just for a few minutes. I realize we're, we're so in tune with the clock sometimes. But I want to ask you, if you would, just for a few minutes... Would you kneel at your pew and would you talk to the Lord and maybe not even talk so much, but just let his spirit cause what you have heard to sink down into your being. What a message God has brought to us today. God, I don't want to lose it. My God, I don't want to lose this. God. like, comment, and subscribe.